the free software movement. Free as in freedom, not in cost, is what the free software movement is all about, ethics and software. So what is the free software movement and what do I mean by free software? When we talk about free software in regards to the movement, we mean free software as in freedom, not in cost. Free software is software that respects the user's freedom. The free software movement started in 1985 by a programmer by the name of Richard Stallman. He started the movement to support the GNU project, which started in 1983. The GNU project was a multi-programmer effort to create a free version of Unix. The free software movement is a philosophy and code of ethics for software and hardware alike. So now that we know what the movement is, let's talk really quick about what the movement is not. The movement is not free as in no cost to the user software. Yes, most of free software is in fact free of cost, but there is no bylaw in the movement that states you cannot charge for software. Second, the free software movement is not the open source movement. A lot of people confuse the two as they have very similar ideas, but open source software does not automatically mean free software. There is open software or parts of open source software that do not meet the free software standards. Lastly, Linux, or GNU slash Linux is not always free software, nor is it the center point of the movement. In fact, most of the popular distributions of GNU slash Linux are in fact not free. That is because companies that distribute GNU slash Linux, like for example, Red Hat, add software to their distributions that then make them not free. So who is Richard Stallman? Who is the man behind the movement? Richard Stallman is a programmer, physicist, and activist that started the free software movement in 1985 to support his other project, the GNU project. He is often known by his initials, RMS. Richard Stallman developed the GNU compiler collection, GNU Emacs, and wrote the GNU public license. In 1989, he co-founded the League of Programming Freedom. Since the 1990s, Richard has spent most of his time advocating for free software and giving lectures around the world. Richard has also been very outspoken towards companies and software that actively harm or infringe on the user's rights and freedoms. So what are the ethics of the free software movement? What are their ethical rules that they go by to determine whether software is free and ethical. Well, as stated before, the free software movement started by Richard Stallman is software that is free as a freedom, not in cost. But here we can drill down a little bit more. And Richard Stallman himself has given these four rules as to what makes free software. So rule zero is the ability to run the program as the user wishes. So this is simple and to the point. If you have software or a software was given to you, you as the user should be able to run it however you want. You shouldn't have to buy in or accept something that might infringe on your rights just to run it. It should run no matter what. Rule number one, the source code of the program must be made available to the user of the program and the user must be able to make changes. Again, self-explanatory. You get software, you also get the source code of that software so that you can study it and you can make modifications as you see fit. For example, if you were to get PowerPoint, you would not only just get the PowerPoint program, you would get PowerPoint source code so that then you can go in, see what it, see what the software is doing and make any changes that you may want to make. Rule number two, users must be able to redistribute the program. So this rule 
pretty much states that any software that you buy or that you get, it is your right to be able to copy it and to give it to whoever you want. So essentially, this rule kind of goes against what we have nowadays, which is DRM, where you get software mainly in games that you can't redistribute. You can't really do anything other than use it. This rule in particular, I feel, is to counter that rule, to counter what is being used in industry today. So that if you buy Office or you buy Windows, you can copy it and give it to people without having to worry about a license. Finally, rule number three, users must be able to redistribute modified versions of the, pro of the program. So this is a lot like rule two, with the only difference is whatever changes you make to that source code that was given to you in rule one, you can then redistribute the software with the changes you made. So if I make a super custom version of PowerPoint, I can then go ahead and redistribute, which also means sell that version of my super custom PowerPoint to other people who might want to use it as well. These are the four rules that make software free. If they don't, find, if they don't fit into any of these rules, they are automatically considered not free software. So what is the argument for the free software movement? Why use free software? Well, by definition, the movement is an ethical one and not a technological one. The key word of the movement is freedom. The movement stands for the ethical treatment of its users and of those who write the software. The movement clearly states how software that isn't free, so proprietary software, violates the rights of the users and in most cases does a number of things that are considered unethical. Like for example, forcing the user to do something that would violate their rights in order to use the software in the first place. Or software that spies on the user with or without their knowledge and at all times. This violates rights that most of us hold dear. And also, you could even go further as to say, because proprietary software is so locked down and we never see the source code, sometimes it's very difficult to see what the software is infringing on. We don't really know. We can assume and we can create theories, but it's very difficult because we never see the source code. So we never really get to see what they're doing behind the scenes. Sometimes they're not really doing anything. It's just software the way they intended it and it's just proprietary. But in other cases, and most of the time, they are doing something that infringes on your rights, like taking data of what you search or taking things that you look at or what page you're on a book and then selling that data. And they never really make it clear to you that they're doing any of this. And that alone is unethical. So now that we know what free software is, we know the argument for free software, what is the criticism of free software? And while in certain aspects, free software seems to be a no-brainer, it isn't without its critics. For starters, the movement has been heavily criticized for stopping or not pushing innovation forward. This criticism comes from the idea that free software would be very easy to pirate or to copy because after all, that is one of the rules of free software, is that anyone could copy the software. So a program could be distributed through the guidelines of free software, so that means the source code as well, giving the chance for someone to copy, modify it in the slightest way, and then sell their copy as a totally new product. This is why, as it stands, most of free software is in fact free, because it's very hard to make money off of it which creates an ethical problem in itself. Not so much in the making money part as a lot of people like to focus on, but instead it creates an ethical issue in that where does the line get drawn of someone just redistributing the software because they can or someone just simply copying the person next to them and making a buck off of their hard work and not really 
giving the dues to the original programmer. Now, in the license that Richard Stallman wrote, there's guidelines for this, but even with those guidelines, it's very difficult to stop or police because, well, anyone can copy it and anyone can make multiple copies and those copies can then be copied themselves. So the movement is not without its critics and it's not without its flaws. So we now learned all about free software what it stands for, what it is, what it isn't, who started it, what they believe in, the pros, the cons. But let's say you really wanted to see what software, what free software is all about. Well, there are a number of ways you can do this. For starters, you can go to fsf.org to learn a lot more about free software, to learn a lot more about Richard Stallman and the movement and what they believe in. You could also use free versions of software that exist today. So for example, there is a truly free GNU slash Linux distribution called TriSQL that you could download and install on a virtual machine or on your laptop. And that is certified by the movement as a free version of GNU slash Linux. Another program you could use is a free version of a Office-like suite called LibreOffice, which gives you a free version of Word and PowerPoint and Excel. And again, this is totally certified by the FSF as to be completely free. And lastly, there is a free media player, which I feel most people know about, but they don't know it's free, which is VLC. The VLC media player is in fact free software. It is completely certified free, and it is probably the best media player you can use anyway. So you should just go ahead and download it now anyways. That has been my presentation on free software, the movement, the ethical issues around it. Again, for more information, go to fsf.org and thank you.